So, a couple months ago now, I finished painting this behemoth, this Japanese or kind of Asian themed or styled, I should say, uh, castle. Now, if you haven't seen that video, just check it out, but fear not. Today, I'm going to be working on modular ground formation. So, these are going to be rock plateaus, outcroppings, as well as some 3D printed terrain that's going to match or coincide with this fortress. And on top of that, I'm gonna be building the modular gaming board surfaces uh, that I'm gonna be displaying all of this on. So a lot that I'm going to actually be tackling today. So this video is kinda of gonna jump around a, <laughs> quite a bit between creating and sculpting these ground formations, printing and cleaning up the prints uh, for the stuff that tie more into this, all the Tory gates and bridges and all that kind of stuff, all the shrines. And um, then there's going to be a part of this that's also detailing how I build game board bases. So we're going to jump around a bit, but this was a really fun project to do. And I think there's going to be a lot to take away from here. So without any further ado, let's get to it. So starting off with the boards themselves, before we get into any of the scattered terrain, uh, we're going to start with these XBS sheets. So these are insulation sheets. They're two by two. They're cut all ready from the store. And that's great because this is the size I need for my table. And it's actually a little bit longer, but in the next video, the follow up to this one, I'll show you why I did that. So to start with these, some watered down PVA glue it's going all across them. And then we'll come in with some tile grout and spread it across through a sieve just to make sure I'm getting the finest texture. And just like that, those boards are done until further notice. So I'll go back into the lab here. Uh, these are some 3D prints. I'll leave all the links in the description below where you can find these. And now I'm just gonna clean up all the overhangs and clean up any layer lines that I can. little pond water feature I'm doing a digital kit bash of it uh, this is from 3d alien worlds again link will be in the description and we'll come back to this a little later on but this is how it initially started now to prime everything I'm using this two-in-one rattle can this is an automotive primer it fills and you're also able to sand it so it's good for things with layer lines and the last bit of priming I do is on these cherry blossom trees after I've added these peat moss branches to them I'm gonna spray them with the plastic dip so that these branches are a little bit more durable so once all those pieces have been primed, I can now go into making these scatter terrain bases. So I'm just using a sheet of kind of cheap MDF or fiberboard or whatever you want to call it. And um, I'm going to be cutting these into one by one sheets. Uh, that way I'll still have, you know, three fourths of the boards left to work with and I can put a bunch of different modular terrain. So the biggest pieces are going to be these one by one and obviously I'm going to cut them so that they don't appear to look like squares. But uh, after I do the one by ones, we'll go into some smaller pieces like six by sixes and then I'm just going to use the 3D prints as a reference to how big I should base some of these bases. So once I have the bases done, I want to come in with some XPS foam. This is going to build up the layer so that we can have a natural kind of rock formation that's jutting out of the ground. Um, and when you do this, you want to make sure that you have a reference. So I'm using this Blood Angel Space Marine. I just want to make sure that this is actually providing cover. When it comes to gameplay, uh, whether that's in like a D&D RPG or your war gaming, if you can see the model, at least the way my group plays, you know, you can hit the model. So I want to make sure that if people are using this for cover, it's actually providing that. And so I'm adjusting on the fly here to make sure that these models are actually covered if they're trying to find cover. Then 
then using some of those 3D prints, I just continue that same process and build up all these different ground formations. Again, using that Space Marine as reference, I'm gonna be cutting a stairs out of XPS foam, just wanting to make sure that a 35 millimeter base model can actually stand upright on this staircase. Now that I have all my weird foam glued to uh, MDF sheets, I can start actually making this into terrain. So to do that, I'm gonna cast up a bunch of rocks. We're using Dab Plaster of Paris and these Woodland Scenic Rock Molds. Just pouring in the casting plaster and casting as many rocks as I possibly can in order to cover all this terrain. Once the rocks have been casted, I pull them out of the molds and now I can begin cutting them to size. So uh, I put them where I want them against the XPS foam and I just score the back of them. You could also do this with a razor saw, it's way easier. I just remember that too late in this particular video. And then I'm just using some hot glue to hold them in place for now. I have to stress here though that hot glue is not a permanent solution for this type of plaster. Eventually it will just fall off. So this is just a temporary solution until I come in later with some modeling compound to seal everything in place. Now this is one of the most crucial steps in using these kind of casted rocks is filling the gaps between them. To do that I'm just using some of the same casting plaster I did before and applying it in between all the gaps with a brush. I can stipple that in to give it the same texture as the rest of the rocks but also we're going to have the same material to paint on when it comes to actually painting these rocks so there won't be any visual signs that there was gaps between these to begin with. It just ties everything together in the best possible way and it makes it really easy easy to paint everything later on. Now once all the gaps have been filled in the rock castings, I can move on to providing the ground texture. So this is a celluclase similar to a sculpt -a mold or a fast mash. Basically what I'm doing here is sealing all those rocks in place, but also applying the foundations for where I'm going to put dirt and grass later on. So at the top of these rocks and on the bases themselves, this will go all over, hold those rocks in place and give me a solid ground formation. So similar to how it holds the rocks in place, it's also going to work on some of the 3D prints that I've used on this build and that'll include this cherry blossom tree. You can also see now this is the cherry blossom tree with the plastic dip applied to it and we've got that uniform color and also that durability. For the ponds, I'm going to use this light earth from AK Interactive. Doing this before I start applying the rest of the ground textures, uh, just because it's a little bit easier to do so. This is going to go in the base of all those ponds. I like to use this lighter color because it lets the color of the resin or the epoxy that you're putting into the pond really shine through. So 
So once the modeling compound is dry, we are able to go out and put the ground textures on this. So just the same way I did on the bases earlier in the video, I'm going to apply this PVA glue all around again on the areas where I want dirt and grass, as well as the rest of the bases. So they tie into the original boards. Uh, then the same way I did earlier, we're just going to go in with this tile grout and apply it all over. And now that the ground texture is dried, I can begin the painting process. And to start that, I'm going to work on the rocks. Going in with this natural gray from Liquitex, I'm just gonna do an all over coat of the rocks. And that'll include all the rocks on the 3D printed parts as well if they have any. And another unskippable step here is to make friends along the way, even if they look as creepy as this little freak here. Please tell me what this bug is if you know down in the comments below. Now moving on to the next step of the painting process for the rocks, I'm gonna go in with a black wash. You can use whatever black wash you like. I like to water down um, shoe polish and mix in a little bit of uh, matte medium, acrylic matte medium, uh, just to make sure it holds in place. Uh, but the flow is really good here. So once I've applied that black wash, I then come in with a slate gray dry brushing to hit all the details of the rocks. Again, I'm wiping most of the paint off of my brush and then doing this, just hitting those high raised areas. Now we have three tones of the base coat, the wash that's in the recesses, and then this highlight of the slate gray. So once I've finished that dry brushing on the rocks, I can move on to painting the ground texture. And to do that, I'm just gonna be using this Burnt Umber Craft Paint, watering it down and applying it all over the areas where there's tile grout on the base. Just like the scatter terrain pieces that we're working on here, this same color is gonna be applied all over the original baseboards as well. And just like the rocks, any 3D printed object that also has ground formation on it is gonna give that same treatment. Then to highlight the tile grout and that texture on the ground formations, I'm gonna be using this cashmere tan. Again, one of my favorite colors of paint. It works for everything. Uh, I'm applying a dry brush all over, making sure I'm hitting the top of that tile grout to really bring out that texture. So now that those bases have been painted and dry brushed, we're gonna move on to the grass application. So I'm gonna be using some foam flocks and to adhere those to these surfaces, I'm just gonna use some watered down PVA glue and spread that over the areas that I want the grass to be on. So 
So I'm gonna apply this in kind of three steps. So firstly, starting with the dark green coarse, uh, this is gonna be kind of like the undergrowth and kind of the, the weeds and whatnot. So this is gonna go more in the middle, kind of where the most moisture would pool in these areas. Then I'm coming in with a fine turf, so this is gonna be green grass. This is kind of going all over, uh, and that's gonna give us our actual kind of grass uh, simulation. After that, I'm gonna come in with some burnt grass, and that's just gonna be kind of, like it had said, the burnt grass ends of this, giving some variation in the color and uh, just breaking up kind of that green and dark green. only difference with the boards is I'm not going to be applying a coarse turf because I want everything to sit as flat as possible. So the best way to achieve that is just go in with the fine turfs. Now once that glue is dried, I'm going to come in and seal all the flock. So to do that, I'm going to be using IPA or 50% isopropyl alcohol, uh, soaking the entirety of the flocks. And then I'm going to be using some watered down PVA or some watered down Mod Podge, depending on what I have on hand, and just dipping this into the uh, flocks here. This is going to make sure everything dries as a solid kind of form, and also that it won't be flaking off during gameplay or during usage. I do the same thing on all the base pieces as well, and just make sure that everything is sealed down tight. So with all of that done now, I'm actually gonna move into painting the 3D printed pieces. So the first step for painting all the prints is to put the colors on. So these are all gonna get a dry brush and wash in the same colors. Uh, so what I'm doing here now is all the differences before I apply those big kind of dry brushing and, and wash jobs to all the models at the same time. Uh, so just getting all the colors all the way first, doing all the roofs and shingles of all these pieces, and again, that bridge is being painted red to match in with the fortress. In addition to the shingles, I'm also painting all the metal elements to match the fortress, so that'll be that gold. Then similar to the brown scatter bits, the stone elements on all the prints are going to get that same black wash. And for anything that's wood, I'm actually going to switch over to this brown wash. It is mixed in with a little bit of black just to give it a little bit of a darker tone. But this is going all over the wood elements, so that'll include all of these Tory gates or shrines and all of these shingles. Then I switch over to a dry brush using that cashmere tan color, and this is getting applied to all the wooden elements. So whether that's the trees themselves or the wooden bridges, um, buildings, anything that's wood is gonna get the same thing, especially where the areas have been painted already a color. Uh, that's gonna give that look that they're kind of worn through and that the, the paint is kind of flaking off or wearing out and you can see the original wood color underneath. Same way I did for all the scatter bits and the boards themselves, I'm going to apply some flocking to these 3D printed parts. So while that glue is drying, I'm going to show you how I did the cherry blossom tree. So all I'm doing here is applying the PVA glue to that peat moss. Um, and then I'm going to be coming in with a white foam flock going over top. 
I'm going to soak this in the same way I did the grass elements on all the scatter terrain pieces, so IPA and then watered down PVA. I'm going to soak these through and then I'm going to apply a pink scatter foam on top of it to give that simulated cherry blossom look. Then I'm gonna move on to the water feature. So I'm using this two part epoxy. This is like a plumber's epoxy or a five minute epoxy, whatever you wanna call it. And I'm gonna be using a mixture of food coloring and some resin dyes. Now, as I alluded to a little bit earlier, this did not work out for me. I was going for a sort of bluish greenish, but mostly brown um, color, you know, to simulate actual water, what it might look like in a place like this. And as it came out of the cup I was mixing in, uh, obviously it's starting to do a little bit too green there, but I was okay with that. But this is definitely not how it would end up looking. A weird reaction happened as I thinned this epoxy down with some IPA, um, and it just created the weirdest chain reaction. So you'll see that shortly here. But a uh, good tip here is to pour it out and then I'm using a plastic pipette to get it into all those corners because this doesn't spread out as well as something like a traditional resin. Then I sprinkle some of that same foam flock to give that look like there's petals just, you know, floating on this water. So here's how we were looking about five minutes after that last video, but that's not how the color would stay. This is a little bit more green than I wanted anyways, but it got much worse. You see here in the big pond that there are some weird formations because this epoxy started to cure on me before I had a chance to spread everything smoothly. So um, I thought it had finished curing here. So I started the next part of the process, which is adding a stippling of gloss heavy gel to give some textures and some waves to the pool. But you'll see in this next shot here, when I woke up the next day, this is the color it had turned. Yeah, looks like someone is not drinking enough water and peed in the pool. Uh, so that was just simply not gonna do. So I made an initial attempt to try to salvage this piece by adding some speed paint to the gloss heavy gel and reapplying that in the same stippling pattern. I thought it would give it a nice kind of coat of a blue uh, to take over, but that's not really how it turned out. It kind of looks like I applied icing to a toaster strudel. So I got back in the modeling program and this time I was able to make the bridge bigger so it could actually fit models on it because that was one of the areas I had slipped up on previously as you see me testing with that Space Marine earlier in the video. So. The good news is, uh, through this mistake and time loss, I was actually able to make a better piece of terrain. So for this pour, I'm using a lot less IPA to thin it down, and I'm using Golden's Artist Colors, they're high flow paints. Um, this is the ones I've used kind of on my unblighted stuff, if you've seen any of those videos. Um, and I've just had no problems with this turning different colors post pour. So I decided to just go with this more, a little bit cartoony blue uh, than I initially wanted. We'll experiment some more with the colors uh, using this two-part epoxy. The great thing is it is really cheap. The 3D printing time though is a little bit heinous, but we were able to go from this piece to this one, which is looking much better. I really love doing this project, having these modular game pieces and especially these ground formation modular pieces, something I've been missing for a long time. Uh, and I'm gonna to continue to make pieces like that. Now I do love a fixed game table. I'm looking at my big one across the room. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. That's a massive board build. Um, 
and I love it. It's just really hard to store and these modular pieces are going to be a lot better for storage and just being able to redesign the board, switch up the game. Uh, if something happens, say we're playing an RPG or something where we can actually make changes to the board in real time. It's really cool and appealing to me and um, I mean just the modularity of all these pieces is really cool and I'm really excited to get playing with them. We've already played a few games on this board um, so it's been sick. Uh, anyways, without any further ado, let's get into these glamour shots here. do it for this one guys thank you so much for checking out this video if you liked it make sure you're giving the video a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you want to see more you can hit my patreon in the link below if you want to support the channel it goes a long way to helping me make these videos there's gonna be a lot more coming with this theme and this board and this kind of build so if you're doing short projects or long ones doesn't matter how long it's taken just make sure you keep making them